We are spoiled, my friends. We get this every week. Santa, thank you for bringing that up too. So appreciate you. Whew. I'm like, all right, well, we, we're done, right? I mean, that was church, right? <laughs> Whew, that was good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You think that the music's just for you, don't you? Nah, it's not. Music is for me as well. Like together, do you not feel that energy? It's like, whew, right? That's what we do together. That's the team, my friends. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, when the doomsday theorists say that, yeah, it's got not a good connotation. <laughs> it's like the end of the world is nigh. The end of the world is nigh. And that's usually perceived as a bad thing. That's bad news because, well, right on the tail of that is what? Armageddon, right? Armageddon, if you've been taught like I've been taught in Christology, is the last war between good and evil. And then what comes right after that is Judgment Day. You know, when God looks in the book, you, 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 all right, maybe heaven. You, 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 burning in hell for all eternity. <laughs> Whew. So that's the traditional understanding that I got when the cry goes up that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But today we're going to look at it from new lens. The lens that says the kingdom of heaven is already here, my friends. It is the divine within us. That's the kingdom of heaven. Now as truth seekers, we think we know the truth and are working with it. We think we believe that God is the only presence and power in our lives. Amen? Mm, but there's more. <laughs> but we turn around in fear that our bank account will not hold out. Mm. We turn around in resistance to the person who seems to be a threat to our position. We turn around in apprehension over the dark road that looms before us. These words were written by Eric Butterworth, 1968, my friends. 1968 in his book, Discover the Power Within You. That's 53 years ago. And those words still hold true for many of us, do they not? We are still being driven in our behaviors, in our thinking, through the world lens of fear. So my first question to you today is, what is the lens through which you live your life? What is the lens through which you live your life? Because Butterworth is making a point. What do we really believe? Do we recognize that the world is spiritual and supported by spiritual laws? Because the truth is, all is spiritual. Yes, the drive over here, spiritual. Yes, sitting in these pews, spiritual. Yes, connecting with someone, spiritual. Yes, going shopping, spiritual. And our purpose is to realize this and then to use the spiritual laws that we know. You know, when I was growing up, my grandmother is like, you know, one of those women that just have all these pearls of wisdom. She used to tell me this 15th century British idiom all the time. And it was, you cannot run with the hares and hunt with the hounds. Let me try that again. You cannot run with the hares and hunt with the hounds. Okay, think about it. The hounds hunted the rabbits. One was prey and one was predator. One's purpose is the antithesis of the other. Now, there's several meanings to you cannot run with the hares and hunt with the hounds. One of them is to act duplicitously or hypocritically. What does that mean? I'll give you an example. You know when we speak of oneness and then we turn a blind eye to those in need? Mm. 
Another meaning of this idiom is to speak or act out against something while engaging or taking part in it. Another example, we shouldn't help people in poverty. We shouldn't be financially supporting them with programs like welfare and Medicaid. And yet, we take part and feel entitled to similar programs like unemployment benefits and Medicare. What was she preaching today? Mm. You cannot run with the hares and hunt with the hounds can also mean a failure to take a side, the inability to stand for what we value. Another example, knowing it's all God, but treating some people as worth less than others. For my grandmother, she used it in the latter sense because she was referencing my desires to hang out with the cool kids, to be one of the cool kids, versus holding my knowing and holding my worth. Jesus, our way shower, called us to evolve our consciousness and to take a stand in truth. Truth with a capital T, my friends. In Matthew 5, verse 20, it is written that Jesus said this, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Righteousness is defined as the quality of being morally right. Morally right. Now, this doesn't mean we stand in moral judgment of ourselves and others. It is the quality of being honest, of having strong moral integrity and authenticity. Keep in mind from the previous talks when I talked about the scribes, they were the lawmakers. They were the businessmen. And the Pharisees, well, they were the corrupt priests who were in charge of the rituals at the temple. Now, I got to tell you, my friends, Jesus was bodacious in calling out erroneous beliefs. He reminded people that they cannot follow the rules of man and expect to get into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus called out hypocrisy. He was clear that putting money and the laws of the land above love and caring of God, ourselves, and our neighbors was not the frequency of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was challenging those who were duplicitous, who were filled with greed and hatred. He told them they were not the expression of God in skin. Now, as a community, we have just completed looking at our spiritual gifts and have started to put them into action, put them into practice. And my question to you comes up here. It's like, what lens are you viewing your life through as you're doing these volunteer actions? Is it the lens that says everything is transactional? Mm -hmm. Does your thinking tell you that if you're giving of your gifts, talents, and treasures, then you should be getting something back in return? Does your thinking say that if you give of your time, then you expect to receive something free in return? Does your thinking say that you are in service, then you no longer have to give treasure? Does your thinking say, well, you know what, I marched in the civil rights in the 60s, I'd be done now. <laughs> and what about love? What about love? Does your thinking say you'll only share love if there's a guarantee that that love will be returned? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you may be forfeiting the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the expression of the divine. It is being gut-wrenchingly honest with who we are in all aspects of the self. We are called to do our own moral inventory, including looking at our character deficits, our strengths, our weaknesses, and an overarching look at the damage we've caused to others due to our stinking thinking, cultural programming, and trauma that we've experienced. We cannot continue to live our lives in lack, blame, and fear while still touting that we are enlightened. That's not how we get into the kingdom of heaven, my friends. 
You know I love John A. Sanford, and he teaches the following. For in the ethic of the kingdom of God, falseness cannot be accepted. Only genuine personality, no matter how sinful or dubious his life may be, they can enter into the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven requires a depth morality which penetrates through the outer shell of man to his heart. And that's for the book that I just, I just adore it. It's the kingdom within. Notice, this isn't about being pious versus being a sinner. This isn't about looking good on the outside while we're seething in shadows on the inside. This is about being conscious and honest with who we are on a spiritual and physical level. In the story of Jesus' crucifixion, he was being crucified between two men, known as the penitent thief and the unrepentant thief. And this story is often used in traditional preaching to invite you to bear your crosses so that you can get into the kingdom of heaven. But I don't see it in that light. I see the crucifixion story as reminding us that the kingdom of heaven is available to anyone, any one of us who is ethically conscious of who we are. Anyone awakened in consciousness is able to enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven was available to the one who knew he had missed the mark, right? That's an error. He missed the mark, owned up to it, accepted the consequences of his behavior. And the penitent thief simply said, I love you. Can I be with you in the kingdom of heaven? Our greatest delusion is thinking that we can avoid the unconscious and solve the moral problems of life by creating a righteous exterior or by an ethic of outdoor obedience to laws. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? In New Thought, we often have this formula. It's an unconscious formula. Denials and affirmations plus positive thinking equals enlightenment. My friends, enlightenment only comes from the deconstruction of the self. Did you hear me? Enlightenment can only come from the deconstruction of the self. The willingness to say, I am this thing I label as bad, wrong, pious, good. Because this is all God. And I am no longer fearing the judgments of myself or others. Now, next Sunday, our own Reverend Cindy B. Wright, stand for a second, please, lovely. She's going to be giving a talk next Sunday, and she's going to continue this work as she asks us to look at our shadows. And then, guess what? We can make peace with them. Claiming that the light of God can love all our dark spaces. The kingdom of heaven asks us to be honest with who we are within, to be radically ethical, to be an awakened consciousness. Here's how I see the kingdom of heaven. It's a call to finally let the facade, the roles, the programming, let it go and become the truth of who you were truly meant to be. Divine human expressing in the frequency of love in all you do, in all you say. The acceptance of us as spiritual beings the expression of God in skin is how we live from the kingdom within out. What if we viewed life through the lens that all is source? Then that would mean when we are sharing our gifts, talents, and treasures, it's simply how we live our purpose in the world. When we give our time, it's a gift of present moment awareness, being right there in that moment with that person, nothing else matters. 
giving service is the outpicturing of oneness. Being God in skin is how we live the truth we know. We say it all the time as our fifth principle, live the truth, and we live the truth. We live the truth. And when we share love, we know it's simply the natural state of being because everything is love. It's all love. The kingdom of heaven is at hand is simply a call from our divine knowing. There's no doomsday prophecy. There is no end of the world. It's a herald from the universe saying that the time of separation, division, lack, hatred ends now. Ends now. It's a heartbeat from the universe saying, let the old be released and make all things new. And guess what? We have that power, my friends. We have the power to say, behold, we make all things new. And when we create anew from our divine knowing, we embody truth. Once again, Butterworth reminds us of this knowing. Man is essentially a spiritual being. This world is essentially a spiritual world, and the underlying controlling force is a spiritual law. When we really fall in love, fall in love with the spiritual essence or establish our spiritual unity with it, when we recognize that this is a good world and that all people are innately good people, then we will see with the single eye. My friends, the kingdom of heaven is already here. It's within you. It's within me. It's within everyone we meet. We simply have to open our eyes. Open our eyes with new lens. The lens of awakened consciousness. So when you walk out these doors today, you have a choice. We always have a choice, free will. We always have the choice. So your choice is you can go back to sleep and be comfortable, or you can move into the chrysalis and allow your imaginal cells, the imago Dei, the image of God, the kingdom within you to create the true wonder and light you were always meant to be. The time is now. What are you going to do, my friends? Blessings. Let's prepare for meditation. <laughs>